Hello and welcome to the Cloud Gaming Report, your weekly news source for everything going on in the world of cloud gaming. I'm your host Zach and in this week's episode we're going to kick off by talking about the newest version of Rainway, which is version 0.3. So the major thing here to talk about is the release of their boring protocol. And essentially this is working to minimize the decoding time of your local client devices. This is great news regardless of whether you're gaming on your local network from your gaming PC to a low-end uh, laptop or your mobile device, or if you're using Rainway for cloud gaming and playing on a server that might be hundreds or possibly even thousands of miles away. So all in all, very good news. They're taking the average deserialization time from an average of 120 milliseconds, which is pretty rough, down to just one millisecond on average for mobile devices. This is very good news and is, is definitely showing that Rain, Rainway is continuing to mature and work hard on providing a very good end, ex, end user experience and is also show, telling me that I need to start testing Rainway. So look out for some videos in the near future as I test it and start to get some first impressions from it. They are also working on improving their graphics pipeline and are, are saying that they're able to deliver a solid and stable 60 FPS. This is awesome and especially is, is, is pretty impressive considering that you don't have a dedicated app at this point in time and this is all being done over our browsers whether it be a browser on your desktop laptop or a mobile device so very cool news all in all they are also working on supporting alternative browsers outside of just google so they now have official support for firefox as well as i saw opera mentioned too in one of the the screenshots but i took out all the video thumbnails uh, simply to make things a little bit cleaner if you're watching the YouTube version of this and not just listening. They also added better support for controller names as well as game scanning. And finally, they added official support for cloud gaming. So what this means is essentially they're supporting the hardware that cloud gaming servers generally use. A lot of uh, cloud gaming providers or just cloud hardware providers such as Azure and AWS utilize grid CPU or grid GPU sorry not CPUs because at this time NVIDIA doesn't make grid CPUs but they possibly might in the future um, but oh, anyways back to the topic I digress sorry guys uh, this essentially adds support for that specialized hardware meant for cloud usage now some cloud hardware providers and cloud gaming providers out there such as paperspace and shadow utilize the quadro cards which are essentially just the professional version of our consumer card so the p5000 which is common in the shadow machine and is also in the paperspace p5000 tier as it's uh, aptly named is the essentially the professional version is the quadro p5000 is the professional version of the consumer gtx 1080 so support for those has been better but they are now officially supporting cloud gaming hardware and so that means services like I previously mentioned AWS and Azure, but also services like Liquid Sky use the grid technology. So all in all, better support for cloud gaming all with Rainway, and this is great news. And a while ago, I saw that they also added support for Windows Server, which wasn't there natively. I was going to test Rainway when it first launched, but pretty much every cloud hardware provider out there, with the exception of Shadow, runs on Windows Server, not Windows. Uh, 10 uh, home or windows 10 pro or one of those versions of windows 10 so without support for windows server it wasn't possible to install rainway but at some point in time they did add support for windows server and now with better support for the hardware itself this is very good news for utilizing rainway pretty much on all cloud gaming hardware out there so all in all very good news uh, definitely look forward to testing in the future but that's pretty much all i had for rainway Moving on to our next topic, we have a very interesting concept with a cool game to go along with it. That interesting concept is Air Console, which essentially allows you to navigate to the website and that gives you an access code. You then navigate to their website on your mobile devices and input that access code. This allows you and up to seven other friends to use your phones as input controllers for your Air Console. This is a cool use of cloud gaming. It doesn't look like uh, the hardware is super high end because of the games I've seen outside of the game I'm talking about today have all been fairly low resolution or low fidelity games. 
So it doesn't look like it's like top end hardware, but it does look like it's a fun experience for a party console uh, where you can just get together with some friends and have fun with a multiplayer game. So in all, it looks pretty interesting. It supports up to eight people total. Uh, the free version does have ads and only supports up to two people. So you will have to buy the $3 per month version, which supports up to eight people and is ad free. But all in all, uh, the reason I found Air Console was due to Final Goal. I saw it uh, on one of the gaming news sites. I don't remember wh which one at this point in time, but it kind of drew my attention uh, because they mentioned cloud gaming. I'm not a huge soccer fan, um, so that, that part of it really didn't draw my attention. Um, but it simply looked like an interesting idea. I haven't had a chance to test it, but if you are a soccer fan, uh, you can head over to Air Console and try to play Final Goal. Uh, you can't even try the free version, it just supports only two people. So it looks like a cool concept. I'll be inter interested to look into it a little bit deeper to see how well it works. But it allows you to essentially take the device that you everybody has, the smartphone, and use it as an input controller to provide a possibly very cool uh, casual gaming experience. I could also see it being interesting for games like uh, board game type games, where you could play those digitally on your TV and use those as a way to navigate across the, the the board possibly using like your phone to move your your characters or whatever those are depending on the game you're playing for example playing risk uh, on a big screen would be awesome where everybody can see the big map and then you, you just kind of move your armies and stuff by like, like in a zoom in view uh, on your mobile devices so all in all it could be very cool uh see if support continues to roll out for this in the future so moving on from there, we have several games that have been removed from the GeForce Now platform, which is the opposite of our normal coverage of GeForce Now. So those games were removed due to bugs or otherwise issues that were caused from conflicts from the GeForce Now platform that NVIDIA hasn't been able to fix. For, so at this point in time, they're just going to remove those so that people don't think and get their hopes up that they could play those games just to find out that they're filled with bugs uh, and other issues. So those games were Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Multiplayer, Hunt Showdown, Ragnarok Online, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, the German edition of the game, and World of Drift. So those games were removed from the GeForce Now platform. No word on when they will be added or even if they ever will be, but at this point in time they are now have been removed as a officially supported game from the GeForce Now platform. Now, our final topic for the day is games that have been added to the GeForce Now platform, and we have several games that were added. So, NVIDIA giveth and NVIDIA taketh away. So, those games that were added are Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin, Darksiders 2, The Definitive Edition, Jurassic World Evolution, and Super Mega Baseball 2. So I will put a side note real quick here, guys. I am actually starting to play Jurassic World Evolution because I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. Uh, so I will have some cloud gaming coverage on that in the future. Keep an eye out for that. I do have some couple more videos that I'm working on for Far Cry 5 on different platforms. So once I get those finished up and wrapped up, I will definitely be testing Jurassic World Evolution on different cloud gaming providers. So keep your eyes out for those videos, guys, in the future. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Cloud Gaming Report. I hope you guys found this episode enjoyable, and hopefully you learned a little bit about what's going on in the world of cloud gaming. Thanks for watching or listening, guys. If you like this episode, give it a like, a subscribe, a follow, a heart, whatever the action is on the platform of your choice that you're listening or watching this to, guys. I do greatly appreciate that support. Also, thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, Zach out.